consistently attract soulmate clients, begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, light workers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your sogasmic business. Enjoy this light language activation as we begin to magnetize and monetize. Hello, my loves. Happy, I was, I'm going to say happy Tuesday as we're recording this live. Today, I'm really excited. We are going to dive into growing your influence through the power of story. Before we get into this, I want to make sure that if you are a coach, you're a healer, you're a practitioner, you're a light worker, you're a therapist, you are here to transform lives in the way that you love to, that your soul is aligned to for this mission. You absolutely need to be in my five-day self-promotion challenge. We are on day two. It's not too late to enter. Come on in. The container in this, there's been so many breakthroughs just from the first day alone. And I really don't want you guys to miss out. So you can come in and play. Go to number 7 figureconfidence.com forward slash challenge. All right, my loves, trust me, you don't want to miss the amazing activations, the heart openings, the light language, the strategies. I'm here to support you in ascending in every form. So let's move into our episode. I am so excited. As you may know, What we feel really, how we feel really connected with others is through story. Through story is where we can inspire others. Through stories where we can speak to others' hearts and souls because we're coming from that place. So if you want to learn how to share your story, but you're not sure where to start or how to even go about doing that, or perhaps you're struggling with writing or putting yourself out there and you know that you're here on a big soul mission and you need some place to start, you are in for a treat. I'm having my special guest, Heather Andrews, who's also a good friend of mine and she's also the publisher of my international best-selling book. It's a co-authored book. We're both in there as well called What Self Love Got to Do With It. She's here to share the importance of five pillars when it comes to writing your story. So you'll want to make sure you're you're bookmarking this and you're um, saving this episode and taking notes. Heather Andrews is a publisher, an international best-selling author, and speaker. After writing her first book, Heather first saw firsthand how stories foster hope and change lives. It became apparent to her that the process of writing and sharing compelling stories is a transformational one for both the audience and the author. This is so true, my loves. The profound healing that Heather both felt and observed after publishing her first book was a monumental sign. Through her own rediscovery of self-esteem and her journey to the realization of a deeper personal identity based on values rather than just a prestigious job title, Heather knew she needed to help others like her to get their powerful stories in front of those who need it the most. Heather is a sought-after conference speaker who inspires audiences in her own direct and dynamic manner by sharing her challenges and survival strategies 
that continue to help her optimize adversity. A voice of self-discovery and fearless revitalization, Heather always makes a positive difference, you guys. Let's give Heather a warm welcome. Hello, my love. I'm so happy that you're here. Oh, so am I. I'm just absolutely over the moon excited uh, because you and I have been through a lot together as we've been growing our businesses. And I'm just Mm -hmm. so glad that we were able to, um, you know, come together in that space of what self-love got to do with it when I reached out to you on Facebook that day and said, hey, you need to be a part of this. (laughs) Yes. And this is how Heather and I met. We met, oh goodness, Heather, I think it was almost three and a half or four years ago. I'm trying to remember. I remember we were at Your Holistic Earth, um, their two-day event, and we were both vending and speaking there. And um, I think I was wearing my Wonder Woman outfit. (laughs) I think you were. I think you were. (laughs) Yep. And that's how we met. You came up to me. You're like, and we started chatting and it was just like, yep, we're definitely going to be friends. And I felt very connected with your beautiful heart and your energy and just what you are about. So I love that um, we got to see an experience and journey with each other. And here we are now. So right. I'd love for you to share your story and how you came to be who you are and be doing this, what you're doing now in the world. Yes, yes, yes. So I am a, was, am in healthcare <laughs> for 30 years. And I was in healthcare management, and in 2015, the company that I was in and working with and for, I had been with them for 13 years. And I have worked internationally, and I know that things always happen with good reason. And as I moved through this space of being in this management role, the company was restructuring. And, you know, that always creates that sense of unease. And as a leader in that industry, you tend to always speak on your staff's behalf, right? And Mm -hmm. so as this went through, I was one of the chosen ones to be restructured out. And it didn't come as a shock, but it came as a shock. And I wasn't prepared for the emotions that followed. And even though I knew there was a plan B, the day that I went home and told my at then time husband and children um, who were young teenagers that their mom had lost their job that day, um, I was in a space of it's going to be okay. I know that there's something bigger coming and I know that we are going to move in this space. And I was back at work within 19 days, but I knew at this time it was my plan B that I wanted to create. I just didn't know what the plan B was. And I had been into the health coaching and I had moved in the spaces of, you know, really becoming and setting myself up as an entrepreneur, but I was not prepared for the, who am I without my six figure job? Who am I if I am not doing healthcare? Who am I as, as I moved in this space? And I really felt that as part of lack of self-worth. I felt ashamed and I felt really like, almost like, I'm going to just call it a loser because I lost my job. And there's, even if you're restructured out due to a company, you still feel like, why me? And that's Mm -hmm. really where it started. And it was at that not rock bottom place, even though I knew that I was going to have something else and I was going to come out fine or good and solid, but it really did it affected me in, a, in, in all sorts of catastrophic ways. And I, the, and I believe that, how do you say, in that time, you, I was more scared to stay where I was because my children were watching this, this self-pity mm-hmm. movement happening. And mm-hmm. I was more scared to stay where I was than to go forward into this unknown space. And it was through people like Deanne Roundrow, Holistic Earth, Womenition, okay. um, those those women's spaces that we have in Alberta that really allow you know, entrepreneurs to step in and connect. It was in those spaces that I met the right people, that I met 
the people that helped me move into that entrepreneurial journey, which started off as health coaching. And then through Deanne Randrow and Dorothy Briggs and, you know, women like that, I was introduced to, uh, much like what we did, a compilation. And Kate Gardner out of the UK, who was, you know, doing compilations at that time, co-authored books to help really bring women's stories out there. And I was a part of a, of a compilation about a women in business. And at that time, I wrote about my health coaching business that I was creating. And that really changed my, it really changed me. Um, because I came home that day and I said, Hey guys, to my kids, I'm like, I want to write in this book. You good with that? They're like, mom, go do you go be Mm. you. And sometimes we learn our best lessons through the mouths of our kids. And so I wrote in this book and then it came, it became a bestseller on Amazon and I was introduced to all these amazing women and it really did create a different kind of a community for me. And it also changed how I was looking at my own story and how our own story can really, the one that we're telling ourselves can really be the one that can hold us back or it can propel us forward. And sometimes I believe that we do not realize we're doing it unconsciously. I have no self-esteem. I don't like my life. I am unhappy, but you put this front on and it's like, oh yes, I'm fine. Well, no, most of us aren't fine. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Because we're struggling mm-hmm. with something. And and I know that you can relate to this because this is what you help women dive into in your own practice and what you teach. And it's really aligning to that soul on soulful self. And when we hone in on that story and we become conscious about the things that we're telling ourselves and the stories that we're telling ourselves. And when we become conscious about it, we change that pattern. We disrupt it. And this is the piece that people don't think about when they're in that story space. And you have to disrupt the story that's holding you back. You ha- and I love that. I really want to highlight that. Disrupt the story that's holding you back. Wow. I just really want to highlight that so that people are really feeling in this powerful statement. So breathe mm-hmm. that in, my loves. Right? Because that's what you and I are all about, is disrupting the norms, yeah. breaking the boxes, out of the boxes. And, yeah. and so I feel like that's such a deeply important, important action, like mindset and way of being and taking action aligned with that for the highest yeah. truth. Yeah. Yeah. And as we so move forward. You. Sorry. What's that? <laughs> Please continue. Oh, no problem. And when we when we disrupt that and we really embrace all of that and we're aware of how the story goes, then we can say, okay, why? Why do I feel this way? Why am what is not going right in my life? And then when I when we published that book in 2016, um, Kate Gardner had reached out to me and said, you know, with everything that you are in what you know, project management, change management, relating to people and ha- and having this coaching background, you could do your own compilation. And I thought, you're right. And I was like, okay, so I want to inspire others to share their stories with the world so that others don't have to be alone. That was the thing that came, was the divine download for me. And there was one trigger that made me think that I could do this compilation and publish it and bring this community together was it was because in 2015, Calgary, Alberta, well, all of Alberta was in that um, economic funk of our oil and gas plummeting. And I just mm-hmm. remember sitting in my financial advisor's office and he was really not in a good space that day because one of his clients, he had just got word, had committed suicide um, mm-hmm. due to job loss. And he felt that he couldn't, he just got lost in the identity of this job. And not having it, he didn't know how to move forward. And at that point, it really was a triggering fact for, it was a rigor, it was a trigger for me that someone had to bring this, this to the forefront that, you know, that you can move through different things when you have support. And that's how Obstacles Equal Opportunities was born because of my passion and my purpose 
was to bring this to the light of, you know, identity, you know, like who are we really and what, and it is a loss and all of those things that move through with a job restructuring or a divorce or losing someone you love or, or even a dog that you love because it was your best friend or, and, and it was just all about bringing this loss because, because really like stories are created from obstacles that we have overcome, whether it be yes. health, money, relationships, loss, any of those things are the things that create story. And one of the things that I noticed was when my story was actually com commented upon as being, I never thought of it that way. And that really changed my life. It changed me. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's actually why one I pivoted. of my favorite things that when people say that mm -hmm. to, to me, I feel like that's one of the biggest compliments because that's the ripple effect. Yeah. And that does, it's like that, um, beautiful, uh, energetic exchange of like, yes, this is confirmation that I'm on purpose. Cause I, as I'm showing up as myself as, and I'm sharing my truth, my story, it's impacting others in a beautiful way. Absolutely. And I think Heather, and we're going to take a, a uh, sorry, go ahead. And then we're going to take go into commercials. So, Oh, we can wait. Just, we'll just go for break and we'll come on back. And we'll oh, okay. Cause I know we got pillars. lots of jam about beautiful. Let's, when we come back, we're going to continue going into the five pillars of what it's like to write your story. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. When you wake up in the morning, are you excited for the new day? Are you passionate about your work? Are your relationships fulfilling? And finally, are you happy? I'm Mia Voce, your host and guide to the power of five. Harness the forces of the universe and unleash your powers within. Join me each Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Ohm Times Radio. And remember, anything is possible. You only just have to believe. A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. All right. Welcome back, my love. So let's have you, Heather, continue your story as we were sharing about how it is that you got to where you are today as a story coach. Perfect. Thanks, Rosalind. I believe that as you walk your walk, you we are all here on a unique mission. And even though we may have, have like you and I might have traveled the same experience, but you're going to have what you come out with and I'm going to have what I come out with. Mm -hmm. And that was the one thing that I really, as I moved into my business of growing the publishing business and the story coaching was how, how stories influenced others and how, when people shared their story, they walked a little different, they talked a little different and they really came out the other side of that embracing their story. And I've seen it time and time again, where as we've grown, get you, we went from follow it through publishing into get you visible and we've done our compilations and we've done our solo authors and it just expanded through word of mouth because I was so passionate about sharing story and helping people move through their spaces of, you know, 
my story is not good enough. Who am I to share my story? I'm just another human. And, and, who, and what judgment is going to come of that? And what would my mother say? What would my friends say? They might laugh at me or I don't have enough time or I don't know how to do this. And that's why we have teams and we have editors and we have myself and we have all these wonderful tools and strategies and people to support you in, in sharing your story. And that's how really get you visible was, was growing because it was be seen and be heard through the power of your story. Because as we move through, the world is connected by story. And it really became that whole thing around your story is what people relate to. So yes. whether it be, you know, whether you're getting to know a new human in your life and they become friends, it's through that exchange of story. Whether you are putting your business into the online space, it's that story because it's your heart. It's that vulnerability that creates trust and conversation and that relatability. And I see it every day on social media where people have entrepreneurs have these wonderful courses and they're brilliant, but they think that they don't have to show their vulnerable side or they don't know how to share their vulnerable piece or that signature story that is going to bring those people in that helps them create that um, content for their Facebook or their Instagram. And I feel like the other piece is a lot of us are so scared to share because we're worried about uh, people rejecting us and thinking bad of us or judging us. And so mm -hmm. there's that mindset piece too yeah. that would hold many back from sharing their story. Yeah, absolutely. And even in this last year, I have... Um, regressed in some ways um, because I had my own life quake, I like to call it. It was out of the book, Bruce mm. Feeler, um, that I, I, I love that term because life gives us life quakes and we spend time in life quakes. And even though you are an entrepreneur and you have a team and you have, and you are an influencer and you are helping people create their stories, sometimes when you walk through a separation which mine is 18 months old and our divorce will be final this year. And even though it was a conscious decision, it still had its ripples. My mom was sick and that had its ripples. COVID hit, that had its ripples. And I was redeployed to frontline healthcare, that had its ripples. All of these things had a huge impact on me. And sometimes we show up extraordinarily well and sometimes we're in a struggle and even when you have all the tools and that you know your story you have to rely on others to help you walk this walk yes. and that's the whole thing of it is is that we go through these ups and these downs and these twists and these turns in our lives it's chapters it's stories it's a book and when we really embrace um, that piece, like everybody's like, Oh, well, your life is such a disaster. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. I've just been, I've just come out of something and I'm on a new journey because I have to learn these lessons for where I want to go, where I want and who I want to be to serve my clients. That's why all this happened. Mm-hmm. I hope and, you all are taking that in. It's like when we're thinking about why is this happening to me? Or why is this happening all the time to me? You know, we're stuck in this state of victim, which is you blame yourself or you blame others and you're wondering why life sucks. I would like to ha invite you to feel into what is happening for me and through me in this moment. Do you see how that mm -hmm. would shift things? What is happening for me and through me? I'm going through this for a reason. I'm going for the, through this for a reason and it's a greater purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And through that, and even as we've built the company, Get You Visible, there's the five pillars that have really, and they're the anchors of really uh, what story is. And it is 
courage. And remember the statement, there's two statements here that really, it, it takes courage to step into what you have endured in this life and what you're supposed to go out and share about that. And it takes courage to share that. But if when you know that you have a bigger purpose here and someone needs your story, your unique version of it, it could be, you know, it, it could actually save a life. It could be somebody's lifeline. And I've seen it firsthand on how somebody reached out and said, I was in the plummet of my in the plummet of my life and I was ready to go. And reading your book realized that I could shift. There was hope. And so this is where I say that in the time frame of I was more scared to stay where I was because I was modeling this this for my my kids were watching me. And that's why I stepped into choosing a different way and it took courage because I had to invest my own money into my company to get it going I had to invest money in self to do the work to you know bring on the team that I needed because I needed an editor I needed the, that team as an entrepreneur to go and build what what I have and it's been my team that has supported and believed in every single one of the clients that we have published and coached and so yes as my good friend dr aaron says we need to flex our courage muscle and we mm -hmm. need to go and this is and there's those so the two things are you know are you more scared or is it too painful to stay where you are and to move out of that you find freedom you do and you find a different way and and when you're in when you consciously make that decision it comes and the people come to support you when you ask. And it's all about the choice. And the choice is about, I want something different for my life. I want, or I want to share my story because it will impact others. And there's also the whole mindset piece, which is, you know, what you, what you are inspiring women to embrace and look at all the lives you've changed. And it's really, and once you, and I remember one story the lady, uh, Marsha O'Malley was her name, and she wrote in the Empowered Mom Boss book. And she had carried a secret with her for 30 years. Wow. And finally, when she got the book, she was, it took courage to share this. And as always, she said was, it's time. It's time to share this and get it out of me and release the shame around it. And, you know, my friend, Dr. Erin Oxel was no different. You know, her story, it was time to release it. And ever since she did that, you know, it created a relatability that, you know, took her business to new levels. And so when we get honest about our story and people are in such a space now after the pandemic that people want relatable stories, people want hope, people want certainty. They want, they want to, creating a community and a culture is all about bringing that together because people miss connection. And so the third pillar is about connection. It's about connecting to self. So how do you move out of, you know, feeling like an absolute loser for losing your job, for instance, how do you connect to self to move into that space of knowing that you love you? Because you, <laughs> I, and all of our listeners here, it's, we are the most important asset we've got. And it's priceless. And when you find out who you are inside and you can embrace your story and for all of the things that you have overcome, and you make that shift to know what you've conquered in your life. Just think about that just for a second. And just know that what you've conquered 
is the relatability and the vulnerability piece that is going to, you know, if you're looking for a new partner, if you share that with that person and what that would open up for you. Because so often we want to hide things. And, and, and if you were to write it or share it with a friend, write it in a book, share it on a podcast, just that piece alone from your heart can open up avenues for you that you never thought possible. And it creates that. And when you connect to self and you take a different way, it can lead to the power of reinvention because we are always constantly changing. We're ever evolving humans and we are meant to grow. We are meant to change. And that's why the stories, that's why most of us have enough to write a book because we've gone through so many chapters, you know, of our, of our being. And sometimes we started off as one way. And I remember Bo Eason saying, you know, what was your life defining moment or where did things change for you? Or, you know, so when you think about back to your childhood, you know, what was that life defining moment for you? And there's, and there's life defining moments at every level. What, when something wasn't, when you were dealing with an obstacle, what was the opportunity that came out? What was the lesson that you learned? This is stories. This is mentoring moments. These are lessons learned it's because you're to help you move through that space. So when you shift from this happened to me and you think about how you moved forward through that and what lessons came out of that, that is that, that courage. You made different choices. You're choosing different now. You're connecting to the world in a different way. And also you're connecting to yourself in a different way. Absolutely. I really want to highlight that too because it does take a mindset shift as well as belief shifting to move from why is this happening to me to why is this happening for me? What is here for me right now to learn so that I can teach what I'm learning. I can share my truth. I can empower myself. And through that, I'm empowering others. Those are some really powerful pillars. So, so far, just to recap, Heather, can you just name what the pillars are so far? Absolutely. The first one is courage. Finding that place of self to move yourself into a different space. Choice learning how to make different choices and they don't have to be big ones. It can be just even a two degree pivot to go a different way. It can be 1% every day. Just knowing the choice that you have it. It's the most, it's the most freedom setting experience when you can empower choice connection. We've all learned Connection is hugely important of the humanity, of the humankind, and to yourself, to your heart. And it's, you know, connection to self, connection to the world, and the connection to understanding your story. And then we're going to talk about four and five after we get back from the commercial break. (laughs) Sure. So we will, we've actually got a few more minutes for the commercial, so we can talk about the next one. Okay, great. I just want, just wanted to make sure. And creation. Creation is one of the things that we almost tend to lose in our world as an adult. Think about when we were young. Our imagination went wild and we were always creating things. We were coloring. We were imaginary playing. We were, and so that creation piece is when we are still as well. Because we get so busy and so clustered that we can't have time to create. And writing is creation. But also when we get still about in that connection space to self, we can start to create different stories. We can start to create different spaces. And we can start to create how we want our life to be when we really get conscious with our thoughts and our choices. And Mm. I believe in this so much. And it was that power of reinvention that I talked about was the, I am the creator of my own story. 
You are the creator of your own story. You have the control within the environment to create your own story. And I wrote that out on a piece of paper and my daughter said, well, mom, let's go get a tattoo. And so she has her special tattoo and I actually wrote it out on a piece of paper and I have it tattooed on my right forearm. And it's an anchor every day that I am the creator of my own story. So when I'm in a space of where I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go, I don't know how to pivot, or I just, I'm just in that flurry, that is my grounding statement. Because I know when I read this that I'm an influencer of my kids. I'm an influencer to the power of story and how you gain influence in your world and every single person out there and our listeners and, and beyond have that power within them to create their own story. We aren't meant to do it alone. We aren't meant to, we're just not meant to do it alone. We're meant to have it, you know, you plug into a bigger network or ask for help and you too can have a different story when you get quiet with what you want. And that's oh, that power of thousand creation. percent. And I really want to highlight this because I preach about this, which is we're not meant to do it alone. In fact, my superpower is asking for help. I actually mm -hmm. just put out a social media post yesterday about how I get do how I create super flow in my life. And the big, not so big secret is my superpower, asking for help, delegating, mm -hmm. making sure I'm putting myself first, my self-care in mind, body, spirit, so that I'm coming from a place of overflow. And I love what you just shared, Heather, the same thing. We need to be surrounding ourselves with people who are uplifting us, who are supporting us, who believe in us, who know that we have a bigger game and we need to speak our message and share our story out there. So thank you for really reinforcing that. Beautiful. When we come back, we're going to continue jamming about how to really get out of your own way. And Heather's going to give you some tips on that. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. <music> My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Melissa from Michigan. I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school, but I still can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. All right, welcome back, my loves. Heather, let's get into the fifth pillar, the final pillar of, of storytelling. Perfect. The last one is after courage, choice, connection, and creation is um, community and culture. And I, I love the two of these um, because it is about creating culture. Like we hear it in corporate about creating culture and what that looks like in creating community. And so the culture is the feeling of the community. And it's really about 
in that community, how the people are showing up and how you support each other and moving in those spaces. And when we bring community together, otherwise known as our tribe or the people that support us, it can be many different, many different people. It can be friends. It can be family. It can be your people in your Facebook group that you do business with. It can be your team. And all I can say is, is that as you go out and share your story in that vulnerable way, people relate to you. People begin to trust you and community is trust. It's relatability. It's how we can serve each other in that capacity called life and how we can rise, raise each other up much like what you've addressed already. And in your own tribe of, uh, in your own tribe on Facebook. And mm -hmm. it's, and in a time like today, we really, really need these communities because even when we are going through a tough time, we need those people to support us. And in this last year and a half, it was my team and my inner circle of people and the authors that I was coaching that actually supported, that, that you know, supported me um, as well. And so, because it's that give and take. And so in that community, it's so important because it is who we surround ourselves with that keeps our vibe high, that keeps it allowing us to grow and evolve. And that's the power of the community. And it was, and it's like I said, it was my team that helped carry my business so that I could show up in the capacity for my clients to help them publish, to coach them through their bigger vision. Because my team was taking care of all the other things because they knew that I had limited capacity and I asked for help. Yeah, you powerful. have that superpower too. <laughs> yeah, it is a superpower. Yes, and I learned it many is. years ago when my ex-husband deployed to Afghanistan. The power mm. of the ask. It was an empowered action. And so when we do that and we have that community that we can rely on that have our backs, so to say, that is what stories can create through relatability, trust, and vulnerability and sharing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Heather, can you share with us who your soulmate client is and how exactly do you support them in uh, the process as a story coach? So I've supported the ideal client really is anyone with a story, um, but it's, which it, is everybody, <laughs> which is everybody from zero, from like, you know, 11 to 99 anyway. But the ideal mm -hmm. client really is that entrepreneur who wants to share their story to create that vision for their book. They have this knowledge base and these stories that they would like to share and incorporate into why they're passionate about what they do. And because the story makes it relatable, what they know is the credibility and that influence piece to go out and share. And that is just, that's, you know, our main niche. Our second one, of course, is helping people walk. You know, there's lots of people that come to me and just say, I want to share a fiction or a nonfiction book that I have within me because I love to write. And mm. so we serve both. And we have the teams that we have the teams to support both. And I, because I think that it's, I want to create opportunity for people to share what they know and also that personal vision for themselves. So beautiful. And so when somebody comes in to work with you, how do you walk them through that process? Is it a lot of mindset coaching as well as strategy? It is. And so we actually help them overcome. So when a person, I'll just kind of take you through what our writing course is actually, because it takes, it's, it's kind of like the step-by-step. -step. So when somebody comes to me and says, Heather, I have this book in me and I don't know where to start. It's like, okay, let's go back to the beginning. And let's go through these pivotal moments of your life. And what is your bigger vision? 
how do you see this reaching the masses? Who is your target audience? So these are a couple of brainstorming sessions because we have to get really super clear on that piece. You can sit down and write your book, but you have to, you, you do have to have that target market because there is those people that you want to reach and you want to make sure that your story is being reached by those people, by that audience, because that's who you are chosen to help or that's who you want. That's who you want to serve. And the second piece is the second thing we do is yes, the mindset, the excuses, the fear, finding courage, moving through the time piece, because we actually do a little bit of time management as you begin to write your book. And we do talk about judgment and what that looks like and all the legalities of writing, because some stories are really super sensitive and we have to, and we have to make it reader impactful, but we also have to stay to that person's story, right? So we have, mm-hmm. there's all those pieces that we talk about as we are writing this. And as a story coach, it's kind of like pulling those pieces out of the person so that they can, you know, put it into some, into an effect and way. So it's going to have reader impact and help them keep their voice and keep their story in that. And then the third thing that we do is we help them write the, write the book to create feeling, to create that emotional piece. And instead of saying, I drove to the grocery store and it, and I drove to the grocery store. Well, what was the drive like? Mm -hmm. Well, I got into my car and it was a really hot, sunny day and the trees were blooming and, but the, but the the grocery store was really, really busy. And I kind of felt a little bit stressed as I drove to the grocery store that day. That's what we help them with to create their book, their manuscript. Yes. I love that. It's the walking through the experience for the readers, for the listeners. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. And And it's allowing the how to come out. Because readers Mm. want the how. They want the, what, how did you do this? They want that from our reader or from our, from our author. They want to know how they move through it. And that's that reader impactability that we talk about. And it's, and sometimes it's an, it's a objective person looking at it going, no, that's really super valuable. You need to keep that in there or no, that's redundant. And it doesn't really flow in, but it's an important piece. Okay, so what can we do to make, make this piece more fluid? How did how the story flows? And and the fourth thing that we do is we is we just talk about you know the overall structure. Like how is this a re, how is this going to be reader impactful, and how is it going to move in those spaces that it's just going to flow and that person walks away going, wow, somebody needs to read this book. And then we talk about the publishing piece. And the, the steps to the publishing piece really are like the editing, because not all, not all editing is the same. There's the development content of the editing, and then which is kind of like building the story for the reader and keeping the, per, and keeping the author's voice. But also it's the, and then there's the copy editing. And the copy editing is just making sure that, you know, grammar, gr- grammatically it flows and it's, and the commas are in the right place and the words are, the words are effective and air all the spelling. And then we have, you know, the quality assurance check, making sure that, you know, everything is as it should be in this book for reader impact. And it's just that third set of eyes. And then it goes off to the formatting. And then, and also the, the other most important piece too, is your book cover. Some people think that you can just put a, you know, a Shutterstock photo on there and you can, and that's wonderful. But This book cover is the first marketing piece that authors use to announce that this is their book. And so I always say that the book cover has to reflect the book. It has to be of that, that attention grabbing where people go, Oh, I love it. I want that. And so it's colors, it's, it's photo, it's illustration creation. It's the, it's the, synopsis on the back when people read it and go, Oh, I want that. I want to read this book because it's so great. And these are all those little components that people may not think about as they're publishing their story or their book. And so I always said, I created my company so that it was an avenue so that people could take what was in journals, what was on their computer or in their heart or in their head and my company was that vehicle to get that out there, 
to help inspire others to know that they're not alone in this world. And I just want to say, as you know, my experience in working with you, Heather, ha was incredible writing my very first co-authored book. It, you just made everything so easy, like super doable. You, I felt like you were walking right beside me. You're always just right there. And I'm kind of like, how, how do you do that? But you totally were always just right there. And you still are when I'm needing support with uh, getting more copies and printing them out. Like you've been incredible. And you guys, I honestly, like, I highly recommend Heather, working with Heather. If you're really feeling called to share your story, but you really don't know where to start or you have some idea, Heather's going to be the eyes for you because of her expertise so that, you know, you, you, we just don't know what we don't know. And Heather knows. So this is a lady to connect with. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flow us into a guided meditation and light language activation to really have you feel into this part of you as you're listening to this episode, as you're taking in the wisdom, the juicy golden nuggets that I really want you to focus on that in this moment so that it inspires you to take action, to take action and go out there and share, write that book, share your story, share your truth share it. So inviting you right now to just get yourself more comfortable. You can have a soft gaze. You can close your eyes and just feeling into the thing that Heather and I were conversing on so far that is really at the forefront for you right now. Noticing what that is and then noticing how your body feels as you really allow yourself to embody this thought. Does it have you feel more inspired? How does it help you feel more lightness? Maybe something's tingling, something's stirring. And with this, just notice if there's any resistance. And it's okay. Don't try to fight the resistance. The resistance is trying to keep you safe. So it's just breathing. As you breathe into this lightness, this groundedness, whatever the feel-good sensations are, I invite you to also breathe through the resistance. Expand, 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 send that resistance, love and gratitude. And then anchor in to what feels the most good to you in this moment. And I want you to feel into the possibilities, feel into the possibilities of sharing your story writing it out. Your story is so powerful. Imagine your story getting into the hands of others. The people that need to hear and read your story. Imagine them feeling touched, moved, stirred, inspired, braver. Imagine them taking inspired action because they read your story. Because of you stepping into your truth, speaking it and writing it into existence, you change many lives. So feel into this. And I'm going to seal this in with a light language transmission.
Breathing this in and anchoring it in. Beautiful, my loves. So taking your time to come on back out, feeling and holding on to this experiencing, letting it flow through. And if you feel called to, and you're curious to learn more about Heather and learn more from Heather, Heather, how can people get connected with you? The easiest way is to go to the website, www.getyouvisible.com or they can personally email me at heather at getyouvisible.com beautiful awesome my loves and one more thing we have a giveaway we're giving away what self love got to do with it book the first three people to comment on my social media Rosalind Fun Coaching Bold Sexy Warrior on Facebook and say I want self love book will receive a free copy right in your own hands, a physical copy of this book. Thank you, Rosalind. Thank you, love. Thanks so much for being here.